All right, here's the second installment today. I was going to include this in the first one, but we ran a little long, so this will just take a couple of minutes. I wanted to go over the P&L chart, or the P&L model is what I call it. So this is just an objective way to keep track of where you are when you're trading, uh, and you really mean it. I don't mean trading is different than building positions for hodling, as the crypto verse calls it. You know, holding positions for big moves, that's completely different than this right here, not even in the same realm. When you're trading to mean it and trading to create an income stream, it doesn't matter what you're trading. You know, it, as long as it's the product you're trading is liquid, has a lot of movement, I mean, it could be hay bales, it could be donkeys, it could be anything, it does not matter. But underlying that, you have to have a, a very, very uh, refined model to guide you in your trading. That's what this is. So I've got them created. If you scrolled across that spreadsheet I showed you guys whenever I, you know, I've got them built for all the things that I trade. Uh, this is pro predominantly for full-time trading, not for, um, it's for trading whenever you, uh, whenever you can sit in front of a screen. All right, so let's go over some of the features of this. Uh, here's just the intent. Uh, you can read that. Uh, starting capital, we're trying to build this. Uh, number one, end result is to try to build two income streams. But you have to build the first one first uh, as hook and bait, or bait and hook, uh, to get, get folks in. So we can prove it with a thousand. Most people can scrounge a thousand um, that are working jobs, but it's not a get-rich-quick over, uh, overnight scheme by any way, shapes, uh, shape, or form. All right, so we're going to use uh, five times leverage in this. You can change it whatever you want to, but conservatively, until we get numbers run, we stay there. Anytime you change anything in these yellow blocks, it impacts the algorithm, you know, output down here. Um, so this is just a function of, you know, your starting capital times leverage. So if we went 25, we'd be trading with $25,000. But we're not. We're going five times leverage. Um, we're only going to allocate 50% per trade until we get our data points because that gives us flexibility uh, focusing on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, that will give us the opportunity to flip between both of those if we get two, two signals, you know, close to simultaneous. Daily gold per trade, a half a percent. That's all we're shooting for. Very conservative. Um, so getting down in here, th these columns are all ex self-explanatory. The month, the week, the day. Capital per trade is nothing more than um, starting capital times leverage with how much allocation you're putting out per trade. That's all that's a function of. And then of course this is a function of you know how much what your goal, uh, daily goal is. So if we go one, one percent of that's it's one percent of the total capital traded. But we're going to stay at point five, uh, point zero five. Sorry. What? <clears throat> There we go, half a percent. Uh, I had to get my decimals right there. All right, so uh, now this column here is when, whenever you're trading, you know that's uh, that's your real P and L for the day. The objective is to beat your P and L model each week. You can have these cells color coded ever how you want to. So if you only pick up eight bucks that day, nothing happens. You pick up thirteen. 
and that way you can get a quick visual on how many days you're beating your model. You can code the weeks, something different, so they really stand out so that you'll know what you're, uh, how you're doing. This is a check. This is just like when you're losing weight and you're weighing yourself every day. Hey, how am I doing? How am I stacking up? If you miss the, miss the week, then if you miss one week, then your objective is you've got to beat the monthly p &L. If you sh If you're short on the monthly, you've got to beat the quarterly. That's just how it works out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. But you, so you fall back, but you cannot not beat the quarterly results. You have to beat, you have to stay ahead of the quarterly for this to work out, and that's why it's so conservative. All right, so we can see here. Um, hopefully, you've played around with the numbers a little bit, but let's just look at this conservative model, and we'll scroll down. So if everything goes according to plan, month 12, you know, you've got, you know, somewhere around six grand. So let's just go back up here. Let's start year number two with six. So at the end of year number two, you've got 40 grand. Um, I know it may seem like a, a yawner. Two years is a long time. The, the, the difficulty with anything uh, that grinds it out like this is that it's you grind it out it's just like it's like watching grass grow so discipline and focus is crucial to this right here but let's say we get to 30,000 instead of 40 at the end of year two Now we're talking about some uh, some scratch. All right, so that's uh, so now we got some money to work with. At the end of year three. Let's look at year four. Let's say we don't get two fifty, two hundred. We get one fifty. Yeah, that's at the end of year four, using very conservative money management algorithms. So the question is, if it's proven, if you can prove the theory in a quarter and do this, um, and do this process, continue it up two hours a night, five nights a week. Of course, you're not going to do it every single month. There are going to be times when. Uh, people just have life going on so but um, the math is there the math proves it out and there's n absolutely nothing extraordinary about this math model right here there's no home runs required it's just a grind and that's what makes it so appealing and so uh, hard to believe but uh, so anyway we just have to prove the model out in real time and um, yeah, you're starting to get some scratch at year four. That's life changing right there. So you're talking about you know some days, you know, you're banking three grand plus a day in, in a lot of those uh, time periods there. So. So it's possible. That's all I wanted to show here, that the math shows it. But um, what, what gets in the way with this all the time is a loss of focus uh, and, you know, just other things in life. Especially that first year when you're only, <clears throat> when you're trying to grind out $13 a day. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I'm never going to get there. But you will. So this is just showing with a thousand bucks. So, but again, if you can't do this with a thousand, you can't do it with a hundred thousand. Uh, it doesn't work that way. You might think the more money you have, the easier it is. Uh, the, the truth of the matter, the more money you have, the easier it is to lose it, to get sloppy. 
but if you have a good foundation, you can drive forward. Okay, hey, that's all I wanted to do, just show you how you can manipulate these these uh, data inputs right here to arrive at, you know, fantasy level uh, end results, but it's best to stay with very conservative inputs. All right, that's all I have for this one right here. We'll chat later.